right, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at Microsoft Planner. Now, Planner is a project management tool. It helps businesses plan out any kind of project, be it an office move, the release of a new software application, implementation of a new technology, whatever it is, we can use Planner to plan out those projects. The way Planner works is it helps us create tasks and assign tasks to individuals, colleagues within our business for action. So how do we access Planner? Well, the easiest way is to go to a web browser, go to office.com, and once you've logged in, you can see the Planner icon from the main dashboard, or alternatively, go to the app launcher and click on Planner from there. When you go into Planner for the first time, you have the option to press the Create a Plan button to create a new plan, or you could select the new plan option from the top left hand corner here. Now, when we create a new plan, we're asked to provide a plan name. So I'm gonna go ahead and use an office move as an example of the type of project we'll be working on using Planner. I then need to select the correct privacy option. I can make this public so anybody in my organization can see the contents of this plan. I can keep it private so only colleagues that are working on this project can see the plan contents. Once we've selected our privacy option, go ahead and click the Create Plan button. Now, by default, what Planner does is it creates our first bucket. A bucket is simply a collection of tasks. So, for example, Planner has created me a to-do bucket, and any task that I add in here will be simply a collection of those tasks that are still to do. Now, what you may want to do is create additional buckets to categorize and make it easy to view which tasks are at a certain stage in the process. So for example, as well as having the to-do bucket, I may click on the add new bucket option here and create a bucket for any task that is currently in progress. What I could also do is create a new bucket for any task that has been blocked. So for example, if we have a task that is waiting on, waiting on a third party, we may put that into the blocked bucket. So let's create the blocked bucket as well. Now, when I've created my buckets, what I want to do first of all, before I do anything else, is invite other team members to contribute to this project. So, over on the right hand side, I have the members drop down, and I have the option to enter in a colleague name, select the colleague, and add them to the plan. And I can go through and add in as many colleagues as I like there. So let's now add our first task to this plan. So if I click on the add task button underneath to do, the first thing I'm asked to do is give the task a name. So let's say for the new office, we have to allocate seating. I can then click on set due date to add a due by date for the task, and then assign the task to either myself or a colleague. So let's assign that task to a colleague. Once I've added in those details, all I do is click the add task option, and the task card is created underneath here. Um, let's go through and create another task. Maybe we need to order some furniture for our new office. Again, let's set a due by date and I'll assign that to myself. And let's add a couple more tasks. So let's say we need some fiber lines in there as well. And let's also say that we need to install some electrical cable. Now, just a word of note, you don't have to set a due date and you don't have to immediately assign a task to a colleague. So you can see there, I've added a task without entering any of those details. 
So I now have four tasks in my to-do bucket. Um, we can add extra detail to these tasks though, because when we talk about tasks like allocating seating, there's quite a few steps that we need to go through as part of that process. So if I click on the card name, it gives me this pop-up window where I can start to populate that task with more detail. So for example, I can change the bucket that the task is currently in. So I can move it to the in progress or blocked bucket. Once I've started work on that task, I can change the progress indicator. So at the moment it says that the task hasn't been started. I can mark it that as currently in progress or complete. We can also give our tasks a priority. Now by default, each task will be marked with the medium priority, but we can mark that as urgent, important, or as low priority. And I'm gonna change this to important. We can give the task a start date. Now this is good for tasks that may have dependencies on other tasks. So if one task can't be completed until uh, a certain task has also completed, then we may add a start date on there. We've got the due by date that we've already added, and I've also got the option to add in some additional notes if that's what I want to do. Now, one of the really useful areas of the task detail is a checklist item. So if we have a think about this, when we create a task, um, a task may only be a very broad description for a number of items that need to be completed. So when we allocate seating to our colleagues, there's a few things that we'll need to do as part of that task progress. So for example, uh, the first thing I may need to do is obtain a desk plan so we know what the layout is going to look like. I may need to liaise with team managers to tell me where they want their team members to be sat and I may also want to get team member feedback as well. So I now have three checklist items within the allocate seating task. I also have the option down here to add an attachment. So say for example, I have a desk plan. I may want to add that as an attachment to this task for reference. You'll see over here on the right hand side, we have a number of color coded tabs. So these are labels. We can assign labels to each of our tasks to further categorize what that task is. Now, this can be really useful, say for example, when we're assigning tasks to team members within departments. So we may assign tasks to people within the IT team, facilities, HR, and this is just one example of the way these color-coded labels can be used. So say for example, we're gonna assign this particular task of allocating seating to the facilities team. So all I do is I overtype the color in the label and then I'm gonna tick the little tick symbol there to the right hand side. I can see now that my task card has been given the facilities label. So I'm gonna close off the detail window and have a look at what we now have on this task card. So I can see that I have the importance indicator here to indicate the priority of the task. We have the due date here. And this here tells me how many of the checklist items have been completed. So how do we actually go about actioning a task? If I click on the task card again, it may be the case that I have now obtained the desk plan. So I can check off this checklist item by marking it as complete. So I'm gonna put a little tick to the left hand side there. You can see that the checklist item has now been crossed off. And if I look at the card itself on the summary screen, I can see that one of my free checklist items have been completed. Let's go ahead and complete the remaining two checklist items. So now that my three checklist items are completed, I can mark this item as complete. To mark an item as complete, all I do is put a tick to the left-hand side of the task title. 
which automatically marks it as completed under progress and crosses out the task name. You'll see that by default, any task that has been completed is automatically hidden. So we can see here that we have a show completed option. And if I click on down over there, it shows my completed card, or I can choose to hide that again. Now that was a card that we went straight ahead away and completed. Um, if I go to this order furniture item here, it may be the case that we have just started work on this and haven't yet ordered all the furniture. So maybe I've made an initial phone call to a couple of furniture suppliers. What I'm gonna do is just mark this as in progress. I'm on with the task, but I haven't completed it yet. So I've chosen the in progress option from the progress indicators. And to make this clear that this is a in progress item, I'm gonna drag and drop that over to the in progress bucket. So I can easily see now which of my items are in progress. That's the basics of using tasks in Planner. However, there are other options that I find really useful in the Planner software. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give each of my other tasks a label. So we've already got the facilities label for tasks that relate to the facilities team. What I'm also gonna do is create an IT label for those tasks that relate to the IT department. So I can see here that in my to-do bucket, I have two tasks, both of which relate to IT. And then let's add another task that perhaps is related to the HR team. So let's create a communications plan. I'm not gonna assign this a due date or assign it to anybody just yet, but if I add that plan, and I'm gonna use the yellow label to create a HR label and enable that. So we can probably see that as we start to create a large number of tasks, the tasks that relate to either myself or my team may be harder to find. But what we can do is we can use the filter option over here in the top right to start filtering down tasks so I can look at those tasks that only relate to me, or maybe I'm trying to find tasks for another reason. If I click on the filter dropdown, you can see here that we have the label filter option. So let's say for example, the HR team want to see those tasks that relate to them only. If I click on the HR label, automatically all the tasks are filtered down so I can only see those ones that relate to the HR team. Let's remove that label. And let's say for example, uh, we have somebody in the IT team who's interested in seeing only their tasks. Again, when I click on the IT label, it narrows down those tasks so they relate only to those in the IT team. We can do the same thing with due dates. and priorities. We can also filter tasks down to those that relate only to ourselves. Or maybe I want to make sure that each task has been assigned. So I want to have a look at any task that is currently unassigned. So I choose the unassigned option there. So in a nutshell, that's Planner an easy tool to use for managing projects, assigning tasks to colleagues, and keeping a track of what's happening in the day-to-day -day running of any business project. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions about Planner, please do leave them in the comments below. We'll be doing further videos moving forward on how Planner can integrate with other Microsoft 365 applications.